I'd like to begin by welcoming everybody in our audience today. So I know we've got lots of students here from different discipline areas. We've got some graduates here as well. We might have some staff members. So welcome to everybody from the university. And indeed, welcome to you all if you're from further afield. Uh, so if you're joining us from schools and colleges or the wider arts community, um, nice to have you here in this webinar. Um, I think we should introduce ourselves, that would be a, a good thing to do. Um, so my name is Lisa Law, I'm one of the career consultants here at the university linked to art, humanities and media subjects. I'm joined today by Claire. Uh, Claire, do you want to just say hello and introduce yourself? Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> Being good then, put myself on mute. Um, hi everyone, I'm Claire Buckerfield. Um, some of you may know me from the online arts fest events. Um, so I uh, work with Lisa on this project. Um, we uh, combine arts fest online with creative futures, and um, we've got some great talks coming up. So uh, it's great to have you with us. Brilliant, thanks, Claire. And our guest speaker today is Lindsay Harris. So welcome, Lindsay. Do you want to just quickly say hello and just uh, introduce yourself really briefly? Yeah, so um, I'm Lindsay and my business is Lindsay Lou. Um, I started in 2011, so 10 years ago now, and I design and manufacture quirky jewellery and playful gifts. And it's mainly uh, laser cut jewellery at the moment. Brilliant. Thank you so much. OK, um, just to set the scene, I thought it'd be good to explain why we're doing these talks in the first place. Um, so from speaking to current students, prospective students, graduates who are all trying to forge a creative career, um, we, we get told sometimes that people are put off. So there's this assumption that there are no jobs in the arts, um, that studying art is a waste of time, that it's hard to make a living from art. Um, and really, we wanted to debunk these myths, really. We've got some great alumni who've done wonderful things and set up all kinds of different uh, creative practices, working in creative jobs. So we thought it'd be great to bring some of those in so that we could speak to them really about what their jobs are like. So we could learn a little bit more about what it's like to be, in Lindsay's case, a designer maker. Um, but we do have people from other discipline areas talking about their careers later on uh, as we progress through the series. And crucially, how did they do it? How did they break into the sort of work that they do? Um, and have they got any tips for us that they can pass on? So that's the idea behind it. I've got quite a few questions for, for Lindsay. It's so great that she's uh, allocated some time to speak with us today. As, uh, as we go through, I'm sure that you will have questions as well. There may be something that you're thinking that I haven't asked. So we want to give you that chance as well. If you would like to ask a question, all you need to do is hover over your Zoom toolbar and you'll see a Q&A button and you can type your question to Lindsay. And Claire's going to be mainly picking those up. We'll probably ask questions as we go, go through and at the end as well. We also have the chat feature open. And that's where we'll put any information that we want to share with you. So any web links that seem to be relevant as, as we go through and we start talking. Um, we will be recording this. So uh, that's, that's for you, so that you can watch this session afterwards and also so that we can share, share it with anybody that wasn't able to attend. Uh, and, and just to mention, this is a public platform. So please don't share anything that you would consider to be confidential or sensitive in nature. Okay, so uh, without further ado, I think it's time that we start talking to, to Lindsay. So hi, Lindsay. Um, I think it would be really good if we could just get a sense of what your job is, first of all. So could you just tell us what it's like to, to do the work that you do? So I design and manufacture like laser cut jewellery. So like um, at the moment, I've got some new laser cut stuff due this week. So the majority of the time is just preparing for what's going to come. So I've been doing like the backing cards for the jewellery, be getting ordering boxes, getting the prices right. Um, because I've got a market as well. 
ne not this Saturday, the Saturday after. So then it's just pretty much just getting everything ready so that I'm prepared on the day. So, um, yeah, like, so I'll be doing like photography, I'll be getting everything online, promoting it. Um, and then I've got all the Christmas stuff coming in now. So it's going to get busier and busier. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the day, if you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, that's a brilliant overview as to what you do. And I was just quickly uh, finding your website, which I put in the chat, because it, it would be quite good to just have a quick look for all of all of you that are in the audience, just to see Lindsay's product range, to have a kind of visual of the different things that she's making. Um, so it sounds, Lindsay, like there's an awful lot of different activities that make up your job. Um, what would you say is the kind of balance between being creative and doing the designs and, and the non-creative stuff? Everyone probably thinks it's d designing all the time. It's not, it's, that's probably like about 10% of what I do. Um, Cause you get like the admin stuff. I've got SEO, so like search engine optimization. Then I've got reply to customers, reply to suppliers. Um, I'm trying to push wholesale at the moment so that I've got to prepare um, like prices for that as well. Um, so designing is like my favorite part of my job. Mm. So I try and sneak that in as much as I can. <laughs> like, um, like, cause I've got the new pieces coming soon. So I was like, right, I want to design a new backing card to promote that. So like, um, that is like the best part of the job, but obviously it's not the main part. There's other things that are behind the scenes that the customers don't see. Mm. So, yeah, like I try and get as much as I can in. I do like set times like for designing and it's usually quite late at night. because I find that's quite my, I can get focused and design and it is a bit like, cause you can bounce ideas off people as well. But um, when it's late at night, I can just focus in my own head and get things right. And then in the morning, I can have a look at it with like new fresh eyes and then adjust things and then go from there okay and what about the making bit of it am I right in thinking that you don't do the making that that is now done by a manufacturing company or or do you do a bit of the making as well um I do the making as well so with the laser cut um pieces it's like a jigsaw puzzle so then I'll put all the pieces together and then um create like a, a, a final piece but um, okay. I do go you know, and have things like manufactured, like I have pin badges and um, I used to have notebooks, but I've, I'm trying to do as much as I can in my studio. So I've got like a, a like I've got a printer up there, that's an A3 one, so I can print out my own notebooks if I want to. I've got a hot foiling machine, so I can print pencils and do like custom like text on them. Um, one day I would like to own my own laser cutter it's just having the space at the moment like I need like ventilation and like my studio is quite small at the moment so one day I would like to have my own laser cutter and then I can do everything in-house rather than like out searching mm -hmm. um, buyers. Okay so yeah so bits bits of design manufacturing and then there's all the rest of it that goes with running your own business and uh, getting customers and so on yeah. um where do you get your ideas from how do you know what to make um I just make what I like personally because um and hopefully other people will like it as well but um it's mainly like animals that I do so I've got like my foxes and my rabbits and um I do like beetles as well I've got like a beetle necklace on oh yeah <laughs> nice <laughs> Like whenever I sell one of these, I do like a little happy dance because not everyone likes <laughs> animals, but they're like one of my favourite animals, like insects and stuff like that. But um, yeah, like I feel like if you do like with animals, anyone's going to love an animal, like a certain type, but I can put my own little spin on it. Um, so I do like the cosmic animals. So I'll get hopefully people who like, um, like celestial stuff and like witchy vibes as well as the animals so I try and get two ideas and morph them together um but yeah like um 
I'll just make what I <laughs> what, I, what I would like to wear. You know what I mean, and then hopefully other people do as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, what? Yeah. Okay. So, um, look, it sounds like you have the opportunity to be really creative, actually, if you're sort of fusing different ideas together. And then I suppose you just see what sells, do you? And then keep making the same stuff, or do you tend to change your product range quite a lot, or how does that work? So, like, um, I always do like a small batch to start with and see how it goes, because you don't want to buy thousands of one item and if it doesn't sell you've, you're stuck with that stock then so i do like a small test run see what it's like uh, like testing the waters kind of thing and then if it's popular i'll do like a bigger order um like my my cosmic fox uh, that's probably one of my best sellers like i've ordered so many like reruns of that um so yeah like um there has been some items that haven't sold well and I have like years ago ordered quite a few and I've still got them now but <laughs> all those things that you live and learn like yeah I wouldn't put all your eggs in one basket like with one item yeah uh, if you can order small quantities but I know with some companies they'll do like a minimum order of like a hundred and stuff like right, that yeah so you got to maybe do pre-orders as well that's a good idea like and then your customers um pay up front and then you know that you've actually sold that certain amount of item before you get them made i'm just thinking about uh, the students in the audience who um will be making stuff designing stuff all day long they might be thinking um you know, I can sort of see how the design process works, but how do you sell stuff? Where do you sell it? What What do you do, Lindsay? Where do you sell your products? So I've got my own website, um, but with that, you've got to do your own SEO and you've got to keep pushing it yourself. Um, I'm also on like Etsy, like a handmade website. Um, you do have fees with that, but um, they do push and like advertise for you like they even like adverts on the television at the moment I think so like um you're definitely going to get some customers with that um but you've you've always got to push it like you can't just put it on a website and then leave it and expect mm. like customers to find you you've got to be constantly handing out business cards got to be constantly on social media like even if you see someone down the street well not down the street but like down the pub and then they they like certain things you can go oh I design this kind of thing or wear, wear your jewellery and wear your products and stuff like that like I've had someone walking down the street wearing one of my um my t-shirts that I used to sell years ago and it's just one of those things that like I know where that's from that's for me <laughs> so yeah it's you got to push it um but I'm also in a few shops as well there's one in Wolverhampton called Shop in the Square and like um I've been in there for about five or six years now and that's like probably one of my best stockists and like um I help out there a day a week so I get to know my customers I get to see what they want what they don't want like um I change my display weekly tidy it up like I, I notice that my stuff doesn't sell very well if it's a mess like because I've got a lot of stock there if it's a mess people just seem to go no can't handle that if it's all tidy like I am one of the top sellers there like not to blow my own trumpet but like mm. I think it's because I put the, the hard work in I am there every week I am there tidying it up I am making it visually appealing if you know what I mean I think, but, um, sorry um I think what's really interesting and what's and what's really interesting for for those who are looking to go into their own business here is when you said earlier on about you your design work really only takes up sort of 10 percent of of your time you know and, and it's all this other stuff that you have to do to make it su successful and um i think that's really really interesting to know what the rest of that 90 percent is that, <laughs> that you have to do um you know it would be lovely if we could all just sit around all day just designing and that's the extent of you know because that's that's the core of the thing that you love isn't it but realistically in the real world you have to do all of this 
yeah, yeah. you have to do boring stuff like the admin and doing your accounts and tax returns and stuff like that but it's important to know you know i think it's important for people who uh listening to you really just to sort of glean that sort of information because until you do it mm. um how do you know you know? Yeah, it was a big shock starting my business because I thought, yeah, I'm just going to be sat here on Illustrator, Photoshop, designing, making things. Customers will come and beg me for things. It's, it's not like that at all. Like, you have to put the hard work in. Mm -hmm. And, like, um, I always suggest, um, like, put time into yourself as well. So, like, if you don't know something, learn it. Like, I didn't know how to do Illustrator. So I learned it by playing, having to play around, um, if I wanted to do something that I didn't know how, I'd YouTube it and then I'd learn it that way. So you have to put time into yourself as well as your business. Like you got to focus on you as well as the customers, if you know what I mean. Like if you don't know something, ask. Someone's always going to be willing to help you. Like I've, I've always said that from day one. Like if, if I had someone telling me the things that I needed to know at the start, like who knows where I would have been now. I'm always trying to help people. Like I was saying earlier, I went to a party and I was helping someone there going, oh, you should do this, you should do this. Like, like it's, it doesn't hurt me helping someone. So it's always like community over competition, like raise people up because you never know, they might do the same to you one day when you need help. So. Yeah, and that's exactly why we're doing these talks, actually, really, to, to pass on some some pearls of wisdom to people that don't know all this stuff and mm. uh, don't have the experience that you have, Lindsay. Um, I do have tons of questions for you, but I can just see that there's a few that have been posed by the audience, Claire. Is yeah. now a good time to just ask a few? Yeah. I mean, I think just on the back of what you've just been talking about, um, we've got a question here and... Um, from Anonymous and um, and they're asking how do beginners start their own design business if you're new will people be less likely to trust you I guess it's just that that jumping off point isn't it yeah um, getting established like, is quite tricky it's like when I first started out um I did find it quite hard because obviously you knew no one knows who you are but um as long as you have a passion that will shine through like people will love you for that you know what I mean like you might not know all the answers to things but if you have a like a passion and a drive like people are willing to like trust you on that if you know what I mean um but yeah, it's, it's, it's never going to be easy things don't happen overnight but um if you if you believe in yourself then others will but if you don't believe in yourself how how are others going to like put the trust in you you have to earn the trust obviously but if you've got like something like I don't like to swear but like if you've got that someone kicking you up the ass kind of thing and that's yourself then others will see that and want to join you in that I think that's good advice and, and it's certainly true for, for other areas in life isn't it it's self-belief and um yeah, that's really good advice. Um, is there any other advice that you would give to graduates starting out in the creative industry? I would definitely get a creative community behind you. Like I've got quite a few. So I've got, um, when I started out, I had the speed program, which was on um, the Wolverhampton University. Um, so I had all the creatives on there that I could bounce ideas off. I've got Shopping the Square. Um, there's about 20 to 25 of us that are all small businesses. And we're all creatives so it's nice to like if I don't know should I do a pink or a blue version of this then I can ask them for advice um I'm also in another business group which is the indie indie roller and they're like um a group of, a group of creatives as well and like they'll pick you up if you're feeling down if you're not motivated they'll give you some ideas it's just nice to not be alone if you know what I mean because working from home I am on my own so it's, it's nice to pop online and then you can just message saying guys I'm not feeling this design what do you think and then they'll go oh, maybe tweak this or do this or have you tried it in a different material and then you're like you, your brain just goes and then you're like right so I can do this do this do this and then 
if someone else is doing it the same you, and you've got an idea, you can just go, why don't you try this and try that? And then you've just picked someone else up for that for that day. So I recommend a creative community. I think that's really important because the students are having that at the moment because they've got their peers, their other students that they're probably bouncing ideas off. But when you graduate, all of that comes yeah. to an end unless you make it for yourself yeah. as you have done by reaching out to different community groups and getting involved. Yeah, that was a big shock from coming from uni, like having people sat next to me at a desk to be in, oh, who do I ask now? Kind of thing. Yeah. So it is a bit, and especially get creative people because you can have your friends and they'll help. But if they've not clued into like the design and like art and stuff like that, it can be a bit hard to bounce ideas off. So I would definitely get creative people, like like-minded people um, and stuff like that. Yeah. Something that I've just posted in the chat because Lindsay mentioned it is the speed program, which is still going all these years <laughs> later. Um, so if any of you out there would like help setting up a business, do get in touch with Joe Wright. Uh, Joe Wright is the consultant on the speed project for arts and the web link is there so you can read up on what they do. Um, but the idea is that you come with your business idea. You're not expected to know all of the, the businessy things around it. So pricing your work and getting customers and you know the 90% bit that uh, Lindsay's been talking about. That's what they're for. So please, please do uh, have a look at that if you're interested. Um, 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 Sharon actually has, has asked if she can uh, just make a comment. Sharon, I've given you permission to talk. Do you want to? No. No. Oh, hi, <laughs> hi, Sharon. <laughs> um, hi there, Lindsay. It's, hi. it's great that you're, you're doing so well um, at the moment. And um, I think that... Um, the, the way you've always been a highly creative person and just the way that you've moved your your business um i think it's 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 quite remarkable so uh, well done and lovely to see you here <laughs> thank you uh, sharon's sharon was your tutor wasn't she Lindsay? yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> nice to hear from you sharon yeah and you are doing so well it's just a really inspiring to see how well you're doing and to have kept your business going for so long as well um, sometimes people try things out and then they move into different things but you've um, started your business and you're building it further so that's uh, really good to see and the challenges of lockdown too um, yeah I mean, has that changed things at all for you lockdown and coronavirus I was quite lucky to be fair because I could post orders out still like a lot of businesses had to close down because obviously they needed face-to-face -face interactions with customers and stuff like that but um mm. I did like I, when my stock is closed down because you couldn't go to the shops as well um I did find a hit with that but then you had to adapt like so I um I design like greetings cards but like uh, have you heard of thoughtful like it's a website that you can upload your designs to and then people can like order cards a bit like moonpig kind of style right. um i did a, a card that was um sending love from my house to yours and it was like a little rainbow like just to celebrate like i'm still here you're still here even though we can't see each other like i could just send in a hug to someone if you know what i mean through a card and like thoughtful picked it up and they like, shared it on their it, social media and it just sold like mad so like I've made the money that I would have made in the shops just from that one card wow. so you have to adapt and yeah. like see what if, if something's not working then find another avenue like just to try and keep up kind of thing so yeah, it's like reacting quickly isn't it yeah it's really about i suppose what you're saying is really about keeping your finger on the pulse of what is going on in the market yeah. in people's tastes what you see being posted on instagram and all of that is yeah. kind of getting an overview of the vibe of 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 what's going on and, and that's clearly you know you're really successful at doing that um mm -hmm. we've got a question from carmen 
Um, she says, do you use social media, such as Instagram? And if so, do you find it effective? Well, social media has changed over the years. Like, um, they keep changing it. Like, they're not trying to help businesses at all. It's just a bit money grabbing, really. Like, they always like, oh, pay for advertising. It's like, well, before it was like a, a, like a picture sharing platform. Whereas now it's like, give us some money and then we'll show it to your customers. So it has changed, but I do find Instagram is my like my main platform. Um, Facebook, I still I still share on it, but it's there's no interaction there. Like I don't think my customers are on Facebook. To be fair, they're all on Instagram. I've joined TikTok recently. Yeah. I'm still head around that, but um, yeah, like if you know how to use it it can be effective but um they keep changing it every every pretty week so it's like they'll change like um oh you're not supposed to use this hashtag or if you use this or we want you to use reels now rather than pictures and it's like okay so you got to constantly keep up with what they want and like um they want at least a minimum of no a maximum of 30 hashtags so you might as well use all of those to get seen um, share to your stories as much as you can show your face as well like because customers buy from people not from a faceless well they do but with small businesses it's better to, to show your face because yeah. they want to they want to know you they want to they want to know the name of your pets they want to know like your favorite cereal and stuff like that like mm. it's nice to know your customers as well like I have quite a few like uh regular customers and they'll still private message me like little things like oh I've seen this and you might like it and or oh, I've just been to shopping square and I've got this item and I'm like like thank you and like um oh by the way I've got this new item out that I haven't shown anyone yet and I know that you'll like it but it's just like having a personal connection with your customers. But like Instagram is my favorite way of doing that. Um, yeah, like I have tried the other ones like Twitter. Twitter's not for me. because I don't know, I'm more visual. The Instagram pictures is just perfect for me. Yeah. I was gonna ask you previously actually, but it's just reminded me again, how much of how much are you your business if you know what I mean um so is your business the product or is it you plus the products do you know what I mean it sounds like you are the business from what you're saying yeah so it's 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 me and then you'll buy it's gonna sound weird you'll buy part of me through my products if you know what I mean so like because I, I like the things that I design I do it for myself but then you are you're buying <laughs> a part of me mm. I put everything into my work like I love everything I do like I won't send anything out unless it's perfect so hopefully if you do have a piece of my jewelry or one of my products you'll see the love behind it if you know what I mean mm. and I, yeah I, I, yeah I can totally see that um uh, when I looked at your website and looked at your bio and um, if everybody has has a quick look um, just how how much how personalized it is so nobody else will have the same bio as you, you you've included some um, you know bits and pieces about your own life in there so yeah I can I can see that in your bio and everything else on your website yeah <laughs> Have we got a few more questions? I'm just seeing. I've got a couple, yes. So um, so this one say, uh, from Anonymous. Um, have you ever worked for other companies or businesses apart from uh, the Moonpig equivalent that you mentioned earlier? Um, I've done like freelance things for like um, other small businesses. So like, um, like I design like logos and like market material so like there's a market going on in December and like they wanted their whole um 
like market materials, like revamped and stuff like that. So I've done all those for them. And there's a few small businesses that have designed their logos as well. Like I've got another one that I'm going to be doing tomorrow. Um, so I work with businesses in that sense. Um, trying to think what else. Like I've, I've entered like competitions before as well. Um, like the few was at university and I did win, I think it was two of them, like a rug competition that was. There was um, Hill & Co and Plantation Rugs. So like they've got some of my designs that you could buy like as a rug. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like I think if you enter competitions, like there's a few um, like greetings cards that do that. Um, I'm trying to think what they are. I think because there's a, a trade show called Top Draw as well. They do regular competitions. I think even Sainsbury's did one, like um, design a greetings card and we'll, if you win, we'll sell it in our store. You could do it that way and then get like royalties or like a one-off payment kind of thing. But yeah, that's, a, that, that's one way of getting into bigger companies as well. Um, sorry, Lisa, you, you. No, I was just going to say, and um, with the idea of doing other work as well as your your own business, I suppose some creatives combine non-creative work with their creative work as well. But I think from speaking to you previously, you've never needed to do that um, in, in terms of finance. Not that I'm asking about your salary or anything like that, but in terms of finance, you you can afford to just rely on your business really to make ends meet. Is is that right? Yeah, it wasn't always like that though. Like um, I think about six years ago, I worked for like a, a different company just part time, um, just to get a bit of money behind me because I wanted to buy more equipment. But um, I found it was nice because it was still in the same, like it was still like jewelry and like design work. But um, my time wasn't here for me then. It was just work for them, come home, sleep, go back kind of thing. So then my business took a hit that year. And I thought, well, what do I want to do? Do I want to focus fully on me and my business or do I want to carry on how I'm going? And then I, I took the leap of um, quitting and just focusing fully on Lindsay Lou. And it paid off. So. Yeah. And here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Claire, did you have a question? Um, yeah. So do you often find yourself branching into multiple design sectors? I mean, I guess you, you, you kind of it does sound like you're doing lots of sort of different um, different things uh, for, for certain different customers needs, I guess. Yeah. So like um, within my business, I do stationery as well as jewellery. Um, I do hip flasks as well so like I'll print them out like on my printer um, on this vinyl um, I do like the printed pencils um, just trying to think what else I do we're so testing you, you now aren't we <laughs> so do you, do you print all that yourself do you as much as you can yourself yeah. but there's some things that you do tend to um send out to other companies to yeah so to previously i did um like t-shirt design as well yeah and hats and then i had those outsourced um but then like they did sell but then i wanted to focus um more on like the laser cut side so like um these past um so i can hear someone at my door but <laughs> I'll leave them. um so yeah so these past um couple of years i've been trying to focus on improving my laser cutting skills so that's with illustrator and then trying to do more complicated designs um but yeah like um I'll still branch out into different sectors every now and then. It just depends on where it fit into my brand and stuff like that. Mm. And if a customer wants it and I can do it, then yeah, I will do that. 
What strikes me, which is really interesting, is that you've got a sense of what you like doing and what your brand is, and you're quite open to experimentation within that. Yeah. And you sort of steered by your sense of what's good and what's not good. And then you sort of just see if people buy it. Is, is that sort of fair to say that's your, your approach? Yeah, because if, if I don't love what I'm doing, then what's the point? I can just go work for another company and yeah. design what they want me to design. But if, I, if I'm doing what I love, then I'm always going to enjoy my job. And then people will see that I'm enjoying my job and want to come along on the adventure with me. You know what I mean? So. You might have just answered my next question, actually, <laughs> which was, what do you enjoy most about your job? Because we've heard about the the ninety percent that sometimes is a bit boring, but you keep doing what you're doing, so there must be some really good things about it. I, I'm sure um, that moment when you saw the guy with the t-shirt with your design on that was a a bit of a highlight. But yeah. what is it for you? What what do you really like doing within your job? Um, this might sound really boring, but I love packaging. Like I absolutely <laughs> love packaging. Like if I can make something and then make it stand out even more like and show it off like like the amount of times like I've been in like shopping the square or been in other shops I've gone I could do your packaging so much better and I could I could make it sell like I was talking to one of the girls um on my shift on Monday and like um she was saying about doing a haberdashery section in her in her little section and my brain was just going, oh, you could do like little shelves there. You could do this. You could make a little sign, make it look really cute and do all this. And she was like, I haven't got the money. I was like, oh, I'd love to do it for you. But yeah, like packaging, you don't realise how much it like, like I can, I can sell a button badge for 50p, but if I put packaging on it, it's a gift then. And like you're giving that to someone else and then the customer doesn't have to buy extra things to make it look nicer but then I could sell that for three pound so packaging like you'd be surprised at what packaging can do like with your, with your products just like that. And kind I, of, I guess it kind of elevates the, the, the original product, product doesn't yeah. it that you're selling you know, it kind of, it adds to that and it adds to this, um, I guess, um, style that you're trying to sell, doesn't it? You know, um, and people love that. Yeah, because there's, there's even like videos on YouTube of people unboxing things. So like if they get something from Apple and then like open up the box and like the sound of it opening and opening yeah. everything. Like people love packaging as much as me, to be fair. So, yeah. <laughs> and I suppose it fits in with you as a brand as well so you're not just selling a button it's a piece of you like you were saying before that is also part of it yeah um, have we got any more questions I can yeah, see a few more coming in which is yeah. great sending them um okay so uh this is one about sort of the business side of things um when you started your business did you have some form of a marketing plan so Kind of like um, with marketing, um, I always do like plan out like a week ahead of like what's going to go on social media and stuff like that, and then um, research any companies that I'd like to potentially get involved with, so like suppliers or um, like stockists and stuff like that. Like if I've gone like down the street and I've noticed a new shop opened up and it suits my brand, I'd always go in and say, I love your shop. Um, are you interested in wholesale or sale or returns like that? And if they are, then like exchange business cards and then always make sure you follow up um, any interaction like with an email, just to make sure that they know that you're there. Like if you hand a business card over, they might just forget, put it in the pocket kind of thing. But if you've got theirs as well, you can do an email, do a proper introduction, just have it all written down in front of them and then give them all the information that they could possibly need. So then they don't need to ask you. All they need to do is say yes or no, pretty much. Um, That's good advice. 
it's really good advice and I'm just imagining how persistent you have to be yeah um, how do you cope when people say no or they don't get back to you I'm and sure no, that will have happened yeah a no might not be a no it might just be a not now so don't feel like oh that's a no kind of thing like it takes at least probably six emails before you get anywhere with some with like a company so don't feel disheartened like if you've got a new product you could always message them in a month's time and just say hi I'm still here like like um because they don't know they might not even know what they want at the moment they're trying to figure out like six months in advance like planning Christmas in like February kind of thing like that so it's always good to be persistent and like if the if you do get a no just brush it off pick yourself back up try someone else like like I said before it's, it doesn't happen overnight you have to put the hard work in so and I guess you have to kind of develop a bit of a thick skin don't you you know yeah um, because as you say it doesn't just land in in your lap you know mm. you kind of you have to take the knockbacks and and sort of and use that use that to sort of um go forwards and and that yeah it's like really good on this business course they always say um don't see failure as failure because it's just research technically because if you didn't know that then moving on you'd still make the same mistakes so don't see something as a failure as a bad thing like just see it as that's a step that I've had to overcome to get where I am now so it's just research it's fine <laughs> it's a really good way of, of, of looking at it and a really positive spin on something that perhaps you you know you you might consider to be a negative um that's yeah. That's really, really, really good advice. Thank you. I think it is really good advice, even if you're not wanting to set up a business and you reach out to stockists, because the same applies to people that are trying to get placements yeah. or, or graduate work with organisations that might not formally advertise positions. Mm -hmm. It's about reaching out and following up, like you've been saying, and not being put off if you don't hear back or if it's a no and taking that as useful feedback so that they can sort of point themselves in a slightly different direction where their fit might be better. Yeah. So it's interesting, isn't it, how the same things keep cropping up depending on, well, independent really of the career that you want to get into. Yeah, and in that sense, you can always email and ask why you didn't get a yes, you know what I mean? And then use that to change the future email, you know what I mean? Yeah. So they might actually tell you like, oh, um, this didn't fit, this didn't fit kind of thing. And then you're like, okay, so I need to learn that skill before I can get that part on the ladder kind of thing. So yeah. always use it as something to improve yourself. Like don't see it as a, oh, that's it. I'm packing everything in. Like, like just, it is one of those things to stay positive. And I know it's hard to do. Like, especially when you keep hearing no, 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 but then just see it as another opportunity to get that yes. And when you do get that yes, it'll be amazing. So, yeah. <laughs> Great advice for life, really. <laughs> um, one from Kate. Hi, Kate. Um, how long have you been in business for? Uh, and what's been the most challenging thing you've encountered? Um, and, and equally, what's been the highlight? So I've been doing this for 10 years now. Um, challenging things have been obviously the nose kind of thing and um, being taken seriously at the start. Um, so I remember when I started the speed program, um, Bill said like, he saw me and thought she ain't gonna do well. She's just gonna go at the first like hurdle. And I, I stuck around, I asked questions and like now like, Bill's probably like one of my biggest cheerleaders now. So it is one of those things like don't underestimate people, but like you do have to believe in yourself and you have to push through and ask the questions that you don't know. And like, don't feel bad for not knowing. Like not everyone knows everything, you know, I'm still learning now. So, you know, don't feel bad about it. What? What uh, when you were starting out, what 
what do you think might have been the issue as to why people wouldn't take you seriously? Um, just because no one knew who I was. Like, I was a new business. Like, I did feel like, because um, I didn't know about wholesale when I left uni. Then I did have someone ask from the get-go, and I was like, oh, like, I don't know the answers to this kind of thing. So I just made it up as I went along. And it wasn't the right answers. And, like, um, they did... Um, I don't know if it was aimed at me, but they did like an interview saying like, oh, we've had some people and they don't even know the basics. And I was thinking it could be aimed at me, but then I'm still new. So, and I know the answers now because I've, I've failed at that, but then I've now researched it more and now I can come back with correct prices and like um, structures and stuff like that. But yeah, like, that, pu that pushed me more. Cause I can be quite a stubborn person. So like, I'm like, right, I'm going to do this to prove you wrong. But also, I need to know this information because I don't want that to happen again. Like, I don't want to feel like that small kind of thing. But at the same time, I didn't know. And I didn't ask the questions. So I've learned now to ask questions. <laughs> That's it, yeah. As, as you said before, we're all learning. We don't know everything about everything. And yeah, asking the questions as you go along is really important and getting the right support, um, like from the Speed Project, uh, like I was saying before. So yeah. what's been the highlight then, Lindsay? Um, like getting into shops and um, being featured on like Thoughtful's like, social media and um, just seeing people walking down the street wearing my items and stuff because I had um like an, I think she was about 80 and like uh, I said oh are you getting this necklace for your, your granddaughter or something she's like no it's for me like I'm gonna wear it and I was like oh, yes kind of thing so it's it's like different age brackets as well so I've got like small children buying little necklaces off me and then I've got like the elderly wearing it as well so it's it's nice and it suits not just a small age bracket, if you know what I mean. So that's that's my highlight, like just seeing it out in the world and people loving it as much as I do. Yeah. Um, okay, we've got a few more questions. Are we all right, Lisa, or did you want to? No, that's fine. Yes, I'm just, yeah, I can see we've got a few. So yeah, let's go through them. Um, so what did you study, if not related to what you now do? How did you get into that? So I studied uh, textile design at university, but I focused mainly on like surface pattern rather than like sewing. Um, so then I used my patterns into like a jewelry piece. And then there's a company that's local to me that can actually make like physical pieces like, um, like the pin badges and stuff like that. So like I sent them design and then they made um like a batch of like necklaces for me and that was like my first product so it was just trying to use my skills from university but then adapt them to what I wanted to do for my business so like I've learned so much from university though like um there's always little things that I can always just knit back into if I need to um because it's it's not just with textiles it's not just sewing and fashion and stuff like that it's um learning how to do like a collection and then you're doing um your marketing as well like and how to it is like may need to show um like other co companies so like you'd have like a design sheet and stuff like that but then I still need that for myself to send off to other companies to work like so they work for me so yeah, like university and like the speed program together, just that's just that's made me like who I am now. So, yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Brilliant. Um, one from Steve. Um, he asks, do you find it hard to remain to be or remain uh, organised? And if not, what are your tips, please? Um, it is hard to be organised because I am the boss which is good and bad because if I don't get up in the morning, no one else is going to do my job and then I don't get paid. 
so I do have to be strict like um but then my routine it changes every day so that's that's like a positive thing like I don't have like like a nine to five job it could be I could get up at 10 o'clock if I wanted to and then but then I could work all day until like one in the morning so I choose my work hours but as long as I'm strict with my work hours I can do what I want but um I do try and get like certain things done so like I do my orders in the morning and then I do like the post office run make sure that that whole like day's work is gone um and then like on a Monday I do my social media like ideas that I want to do but um some of them are just like planned out and then some of them like I leave blank that I want to take a picture on that day like to show what's happening kind of thing but um I do recommend like um like a wall chart kind of thing so you can plan out your days and like tick things off like but break down break down like your, your goals into smaller manageable things like don't just say I want to stock a shop because that's you're never going to tick that off in one go you need to find a supplier you need to find this you need to email so like just break it down so it's manageable for that day or even that week kind of thing or even the month like don't just like make it easier for yourself like because otherwise you're never gonna if you get up in the morning and go oh that's a big job for the day like you're never gonna get it done like small manageable pieces you're more likely to tick off and then move on to the next thing and then the next thing um, yeah that, that is really good advice um one from Sharon she asks uh where do you see your business in five to ten years time well I'd love to be um stocked in shops in all around the world I'd love to have my own um like a proper studio with um, a laser cutter I could even be cutting things for other companies um maybe even have my own shop I don't know like um, maybe multiple shops and then have people like run them for me and maybe do like workshops for people so like they could come in and laser cut their own items or print their own pencils and stuff like that um, yeah just keep keep expanding and see how it goes from there <laughs> brilliant I can just picture it Lindsay it'd be great <laughs> Oh, I'd love to have my own workshop as well, like um, like drills and saws, like the um, like the uh, the workshops at uni. Like I love walking through there because you'd open up the door and just smell the uh, the wood and like like all the power tools. Like, I'd love to have my own <laughs> workshop so I could just build things all the time. So that's another thing. Like I always build my own display like items. Yeah. Because like, wow. like, then. I know how I want it to look. So then if I buy something from like being q then it's it's you've got to fit to that. Whereas if I make it myself, I know how my products look. So I always make it myself. So I enjoy that as well. That, I enjoy that as much as I enjoy packaging. <laughs> 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 I've just got one more question for you, Lindsay. Um, because I'm just aware of time. Um so if anybody's out there thinking this sounds great um you know running my own business working as a designer it sounds great but not for me I'm really worried probably won't happen you know they've got a bit of a confidence issue going on what would be your advice to them just give it a go like what's the worst that could happen it doesn't work so you could get another job but it, what could happen you know think of that you could have your own business you could be the boss you could interact with other companies who share the same passion as you like if you don't know if you don't try you don't know so it's always a, one of the things what, what is the worst that could happen like you just get a normal job or you work in a similar field and then you can still if it didn't work out then you could still aim for it 
by working for another company and then slowly build up your confidence and then you're in the, the industry that you want anyway and then you can take the leap like don't just see it as a now or never kind of thing like you can try it now if it doesn't work come back to it or focus on what you want like you might you might not actually want to do that so but unless you try it you're never going to find that out it would always be like a what if kind of thing so always give it a go but you know if it doesn't work out it's not the end of the line you can just reevaluate and adjust and you'll you'll figure it out and that sounds really vague but you will like you'll something will click in your head and you're like right that's what I want to do whether it is working for another company or for yourself so yeah just believe in yourself <laughs> it's really good advice and it comes it, it because you're saying it we can see that you've done it it it's um it means more I think coming from you because you're a really good example of somebody that's just given it a go and um and you know 10 11 years on as I said before you're running a really successful creative business so uh fantastic thank you so much for sharing all of those insights today um we've got just a few minutes so if anybody does have a burning question now is the time to ask um but if not i just want to say thank you so much lindsay for everything that you shared today i've learned so much from you um in terms of what a designer maker actually does and what your kind of work activities are and how you started your business and um, how you do your business online and in person as well. Um, thank you for ever, all the insights that you shared. Uh, you've been a great inspiration to, to everybody today. Yeah. So uh, any other questions? Yeah, we did have a raised yeah. hand, but if you, Hwai, if you can type your question rather than, um, well, we, yeah, that would be good. Um, I'll give you a minute or so just to do that. That's all right. Yeah, Lindsay, thanks so much. I mean, it's just, it's absolute gold, isn't it? You know, getting this information from someone like you who, you know, you've really been through it right the way from the beginning of uni all the way to seeing someone wearing your design on their t shirt, you know. Um, and it's a it's a real journey, isn't it? But but you've made it. But I think when you've made it, you've still got to keep that keep it going. Uh, that you know that fire, haven't you? You know you can't sort of rest on your laurels. You've got to sort of, as you said, you've got to keep searching for what it is that people want and what I guess what you want from it as as a designer as well. Um, you know you've got to keep being inspired yourself, haven't you? Yeah. Um, and I think and I'm an artist too and so I know that that is you know that's a challenge in it's all of its own isn't it um so you know brilliant I think we have got one question oh Steve um Steve said thank you um it's built my confidence and helped fill in a lot of gaps um yes Steve will we will be recording this so I can share that with you afterwards I would also say um if people have worried about money as well um look for grants as well um because i had some money from the speed program that helped up that helped with uh, like business cards and um marketing material um but yeah if you look for what's available in like your local area you might find like um like little business grants uh, or even like loans but i'd stick to the grants first because you obviously you don't have to pay them back but um, they do give you like like a good boost to help. Like if you want to buy a like a, a Mac, or if you want to buy um, some equipment. So yeah, just see what's what's available. Like you might have to meet some criteria, like being like a certain age bracket or being a startup kind of thing. But um, yes, definitely try and see what's available. You, you'll probably find there is something out there. Yeah brilliant yeah thank you that's really good advice um all the questions I just I yeah just looking in the chat yes another question how did you manage the delivery time from the beginning for your items 
what what life Pepper, do you want to just say a bit more? How do you manage the delivery time from the beginning for your items? Oh, Is that to do with, uh, I don't know, waiting on materials before you can start making things or something like that? Well, in that case, like, because um, I've got my laser cut stuff coming this week, like I'll do like a test of, like to see what everyone's thinking of the item. Um, but then that takes about 12 working days for that to come. And then I've got to make it myself and photograph it and all that. And then once I know it's ready, I'll set up um, how long I know I can get an item out. So I do one to three days because um, if it's in stock, I can just get it ready, send it out. But then you've got to keep an eye on your stock levels um, and make sure that you don't sell out when you haven't got it in like readily available. But then um, you could always email the customer if if they have if two people bought the last one, you can message one of them and just say, I'm so sorry, like the wait time is two weeks, but I could either refund or send you about like a thank you gift or something like that. So like there is ways to get around like like delivery times and stuff like that. If that's what you meant. But, um, yeah. yeah, it's a really important point, isn't it, to just keep on top of your stock and your orders. Yes, another sort of admin job, I suppose, yeah, you have to build in. <laughs> I'm just aware of time. So uh, I think we sort of come to three o'clock now, end of our session. Um, just a really quick advert. I've put in a link to Creative Futures. So you can see the other people that we've got coming to speak to us. Uh, so it's every Wednesday, two till three. Next week, we've got Jason Fernandez talking, who is a product designer here at the university. He's, he's a lecturer, but he also has had a career in product design. Um, and he's going to be talking to us about how he began that. Um, in particular, what it was like being the only designer within a manufacturing company. So uh, please do come back and listen to Jason for, for his pearls of wisdom. But uh, beyond that, thank you very much, Lindsay. Um, and thanks, Claire, as well, for asking some great questions and supporting. And thanks to all of you in the audience for listening so attentively and for asking your questions as well. Brilliant. I've popped the link to Jason's talk next Wednesday, just in the chat there, but... Um... But it is on our web page, as, uh, as Lisa says, so uh, just useful to have it there. Thank you, Lindsay. And thanks, Lisa, of course, as always, <laughs> for working with you on this um, series of talks. Um, yeah, please come back, Lindsay, and, um, you know, tell us how you've been doing with your, uh, when you when you've um, got, like, loads of staff working for you. <laughs> you're in Selfridges and stuff like that. Wonderful. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. maybe you can employ some of us <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay thanks very much thank you, thank you. Yeah, bye bye, bye.